another matter. This repertory has an organization, inter-organization. All these melodies that we call them Boucher are related and uh, their relation is dependent to their uh, modal familiarity. Uh, and uh, so they are they are gathered in the seven large system, important system that we call them task of and five smaller that we call them of us. All together are twelve systems. And uh, all together this system and the melody and the interrelation between them and all this uh, organization is called Ragi. Then you learn Ragi, you, you are not learning uh, just a uh, melody. You, you learn the the typical melody, melody called. And the, the relation between them and the place that they come in the uh, in the way that the Daska is performed, for example, this couche must come in that place and what's the relation? and another Kushe and the, the dominant mode and the pseudominant mode uh, and all of this uh, technical and uh, intellectual and artistic aspect of this music are uh, collected and put in, in this system and that was a system to, to transmit the, the music from a master to the uh, students. How long time do you think uh, <coughs> this, uh, you got this knowledge that there is seven for this and five for this? When did you uh, when did this if you mean that we know you or in Iran this hundred years two or three hundred years yes uh, go back to mid nineteenth century okay it doesn't mean that this music was composed at that time uh, then they put it together we have we have the Another system that we call them, uh, and we have that system in uh, uh, Arabic and Turkish country also, and in uh, Azerbaijan together, and uh, today also, and we call that Mabon uh, or Mukam, the system of Mukam or Makam, or that's a different part. Uh, way of pronunciation of Mabon. We, we say that in expression, we pronounce it Mabon. So, it's, it is not really different because when you play Mabon, you put together several Mabon also. For example, you go from Rod to Mabon, from Mabon to Fosemi, and even in Azerbaijan, that the music is uh, based on Mukham, they, they use the term Dasko also. Dasko means a system, a greater system. Even in Persian, when you say Dasko, I don't know if you, you know it's a little Persian or not, 
Diaspora means a system where a television is a diaspora. Say a diaspora television or a car is a diaspora. When you put together several uh, elements to uh, to arrive to to, a, um, uh, to do something to to a function, we call it diaspora. And musically. We have the process of putting the, the mold together and the melody and we call that diaspora. So, this is a new aspect of uh, domination and to, to label this music, but the music is, is the same. And that uh, I see you written this book. Uh, what have you done in this book? Yes. We before this book, the relic of Persian music has been written by Musa Maruti. He was the, the one of the first person who wrote down the Radit and his Radit was published. And after uh, I had worked with uh, Jean Dury, uh, French musicologist, ethnic musicologist, and we published here in Iran this Radit also. But what's specific in this study is uh, it's not only this transcription of melody. I try to put down in the paper what a master of writing intend to to transmit to a student orally. In case of him, <coughs> for example, I uh, I try to to write down each piece by the phrasing and to put the phrasing in relation with the other and to show what's the relationship of each phrasing. For example, here you have two rating, the rating first in a, in a poetic form. So, 
I try to, to use the, the notation, the Western notation, just when it is necessary. For example, I didn't use the, the major concept and the rhythmic, rhythmic concept. I used the, this uh, form of the rhythmic concept as the, the positive concept of method. So I just used uh, four length of time, like in Persian language, we have short, long, brief, you know, and it works like that. So for example, I I put away the, the rhythmic concept of Persian, of Western music in this location, and I use the prosodic, Persian prosodic concept. This is one important aspect. And the other aspect is the, uh, the free repetition of a figure. So I put them in a, a cap, like this circle, and I put a number. So you are free to, to play this note five times or six times. No. No. Six, six, seven times. So you have an idea. And another thing is uh, I separated the, the structure of melody and the ornamentation, which could depend to the instrument with the stone which is played or the person. For example, if you play this tragic by Sandhu or by Ney or by Tamanche, you will have the different way of ornamentation. You, you will not use the spectrum technique. So nobody of this all this is made for one special instrument. This is this has been written after my playing by Seta. But the way of transcription is it, it, it has been done to a system that could be used for all Persian instruments and also for all uh, step of learning, for example, for a, a beginner, a new learner of music, he doesn't have to play all the ornamentation or he can, he can play just the, the simple note, he will learn the structure of the melody. And it comes from the, the way of teaching also. For example, when the master have a beginner or a student who, who wants to start music, he's not going to give him the use the same melody but in a simple way. He is not obliged to play all the, the technical. Ornamentation or the all the things of spectrum. I mean, when did you start to study this thing? And to study music? I studied music uh, when I had eleven years old. Did you start with any instrument? Yes, I started with guitar. And then were you studying in a university or I was in conservatory. In Iran? Yes. Uh, in my Where was that? It was in... Uh,
Mas o pai tem se desculpa. Aí está, está aqui no meu Do you think it's the difference, difference to be a student of 1964 and today, here in 2000? Yes, of course. I'm not a student today, actually, and I'm not in a good place to, to try for a student. But certainly... I do, I mean, you see students every day. Yes. Uh, I think in a, speaking in an international uh, view, well, it's very different. Now you have uh, information from computer, from internet, from, and you you can reach easily. The, the source of information. At, at my time, we, we didn't have even a tape recorder, to, and you're not allowed to take it if you, you have a tape recorder or not, so you didn't allow us to, to record the music, and we didn't have a limitation. Now we have uh, many sources of written and recorded uh, CD, uh, cassette. Do you think it's easier for music students today to, uh, to get the music, to learn the music? Yes, I think it's easier. And then what did you do after the after you were examination or when you finished university? I had a scholarship from French Northern and I went to Paris and I think there for, for more than ten years. I lived there yeah, as a concept. Uh, I had done time the Persian music was not uh, was not uh, listened in Western countries. And uh, it was not known. And uh, I I was one of the pioneers that started to to make people Listening and uh, going by teaching and by playing the concert, and at the same time, I studied at the New Paris. And you study also in Paris, yes. Yeah. Uh, other kind of music? Western music? No, no. Well, what were you studying? No, to, to tell you the, the truth, I, I started. Even when I was charging at the other guy, I studied just a little bit, so I had a uh, serious base of uh, Western music. So, from my childhood, I, I played piano and I studied the old method for uh, theory and harmony, which is necessary for Western music. That was in the program. Programmation of the uh, conservatory and after in the University of Seattle. When I went to Paris, it was based for ethnomusicology and I worked in uh, Persian music for, for my research, uh, a relationship between mm. the, the poetry, literature, and the music. 
my natural teaching and after I started to work in the way. Uh, the modern system and the relationship with the, the ancient uh, theory of the Islamic country and uh, the, the, the Arabic country and Turkish country, the classical music of Turkish and Arabic and Persian, which has the same basis. The, and we find it in the medieval period. Then after after Christ we come back to Iran yes. a few years before the yes. revolution. And here you gave concept at that time? Yes, I gave some concepts. I was teaching. So. And then when the revolution I uh, I went to to France. Uh -huh, you were not here. No. No. When the revolution happened, I was here. But uh, I had this scholarship, and I left here after two months. Back to France. Not back to France. That was the first time I I lived. So where did you go? Or where, where did you go? From Tehran? Yes. To Paris. I was, first you was in Paris? Yes. Before the revolution? No. Ah, after. Okay. Okay, after the revolution. I was, uh, when I finished the uh, University of Tehran, my master, Bruman, he passed away. I was very young about that. I am not ready in the university when I, yeah. when I had 22 years old. Yes. And I I thought ready for two and three years university of there. And after I and at that time I was in the center of the revolution. I, I was in university. Yeah. I meet the revolution every year of the year. So, uh, when... Uh, did, you, did you say you need the revolution? In the center of the revolution, because I, I was in the University of Tehran. Okay. Tehran. The University of Tehran was the heart of the revolution in Tehran. So, every, every day I, I saw and I lived here. And so that's another mistake. If we want to write down a book, we have to write uh, every day, every minute. So after uh, the after revolution, after the how can I say the achievement of revolution? I had it before, but after two, three months I, I left. Because at that time, I don't know if you, you are aware or not, the, the department, department of Music was closed for five or six years. Directly after the revolution? After the revolution, yes. Because? Yes. And I don't Did know you if understand you, why? There was different step with uh, revolution and university, and uh, I was not in Iran at that time. I know for several times there was a, a kind of filtering to filter uh, the people of university because. Uh, because the university, as I told you, was the part of revolution. Uh, 
And after the revolution, there was the, the person who, who worked, who lived in university, and they were not uh, desirable after the revolution. So they tried to purify them, to, to change the but did you understand that? Uh, that? That's one aspect, general aspect with the university. But specifically with the music, I think uh, certainly you heard about that. The music had and has the problem even today with the Islamic doctrine uh, of with music. And, uh, so it was very severe at that time. For example, you couldn't play music and you you have to have a, a license to transport a musical instrument. You you have to uh, prove that you have this instrument because you play the uh, I don't know the Musical revolution with the orchestra. So, anyway, the, the Department of Music was closed for five or six years. I don't know, you have to ask from the Department of University. Exactly. And, uh, but did they close before you left? No. When I left, everything was, you know, suspended in, uh, you know, after the revolution, you didn't uh, leave the revolution. I think the university opened, the, the music department opened, the uh, non-year after, after the revolution. After the revolution. In the 1368. Even when they open, it, it doesn't work because, you know, uh, there was the, the staff of university, so they, they didn't put them uh, out. So they came there, but there was no, no classes, no courses. And, uh, but that, so that, slowly they start. You were again. you were teacher just before the revolution, teaching Radhika. Yes. And then the revolution came. Yes. And did they tell you that you are not allowed to teach anymore? No. Or you just left? no. It, it didn't work like that. When the revolution happened, they, no. I I have tell you. The, in the, the process of revolution, the, the things that doesn't run in a ordinary rhythm, you know, the, everything was was stopped. The, the people had other things to do. They had the revolution to do, not to stay in the, and there was the. Yes, and so I, I went with the, the, the other professor of uh, fine art department. I remember very good that day when everybody went to the the room of chairman and we talked about new programming. So that time, what did you say? That's At that time, the people didn't uh, think about the brief the programming. They they had a kind of uh, slogan to you know to say to 
good. Now we have. I remember there was a, uh, a person who became the, the chairman of of uh, Department of Fine Art. He, he was the youngest student of this faculty. Which, uh, he said, "Now I I can uh, even." Uh, Clean up the lavatory. Um, this kind of uh, is foolish. He, if, the, if the professor should clean up the lavatory, so the, the person who who had this work to do, they have to come and to, to teach. That was the ambulance. So I understood that. Has a long work to do to, to arrive to a stable situation. And so I had this scholarship, I was like, I didn't stay. I went to France and I, I studied there. And you, when you were there, you heard that everything in music here stopped. No, that was. I, of course, I was. I was in relation with the, the friends, and the, I. I received the news, of course. But uh, if if you want to study the history of music in past two decades, you have to really fix. But yourself in every month, every you know, every year, because the, the things change very fast. Even this first ten years of the of the revolution, or five. Yes, of course, because mm, there was a, the different groups who who were very active in the moment of. Revolution, and they they continue to work to, to believe and to to establish the, the kind of center we call Chavosh, and they Mr. Lotfi and Mr. Alizade was there, and uh, the other person who tried to believe and to continue to working. And this place was closed, was sealed, and uh, so uh, Mr. Lutfi came to Europe also, he came to Italy, and now he is in the United States, and Mr. Alizade came also to Germany. So, well, when I went to Europe, there was no musician in Europe. And I remember I traveled with Mr. Shemiro, and he was a drum player who, who lived since 40 years in Europe. So we traveled all over the Europe to, to play music. And after the, the musicians, like the Rachani, Motelassin, and we heard after two years, five years, he came there and he, he established a group. And now in Germany, because it depends to the, the position and the hospitality of the country who received the, the refugee also. So at that time, uh, Germany had a good. Uh, Condition for the refugees so, and the artists. So a lot of musicians went to, to Germany and they, they worked there and they established there. But then will you come back after 10 years in France? It was more than 10 years, it was about 14 years. When did you come I went to the United States. I, I, I think Russia will be there for two years. And 
after I came to Tel Aviv, like in 1985. So, 85, maybe. No, it was not 85. It was in 1991. Okay. okay. It's about eight years I have been here. Yeah. And then when you came back in 1982, you could uh, teach here music? Yes, of course. The, the university was open? Yes. But it was uh, newly open? I don't know exactly. I think it was seriously, seriously open. It was the first time that Mr. Chiani was the, the, the chief of the chairman of the faculty. It was the first time I came here. And he, he was an old friend when we were young, we, we played together in that center of preservation of music. And in the university, we had the same master. And so, uh, we started to, to work and to teach in the university. But how was it to come back after so long time? How was what? How was it to come back after all this year to tell? For me, yes. When you when you are doing some something, especially some in an artistic way, which profoundly is related to culture, so it's important to in contact and not only to be in contact, to, to live um, to live in the ambience of the the, the country from where the, this culture comes out. So for me it was important to resource myself firstly and also I had done a lot of research and a lot of personal works that I I like to to teach it to, to the young Iranian to the next generation. So it was important that the teaching was very important for me. So that was one of the reasons you come back yes. that you really wanted to yes. teach the new Yes, that was the first thing I did uh, was to 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 publish the these two books. One, and the other thing is the the rally played by Cesar and the book from the new. Approach to the theory of Persian music and uh, this book of writing. Uh, so I, I tried to teach it. Um, and, and now it's been seven, eight years since you've come back. Is it a big difference for this music, you think? Now? Eight years ago. In, in, it's different. Yes, we can say it's different because if we look at the musical life in Iran, yes, because uh, I told you before, since fifty years. Uh, there is a kind of Iranian pop music 
that uh, which is broadcast all over Iran. Everywhere you go, you, you hear some kind of pop music. And uh, so it's important for the Iran is a young country. We have a lot of young generation. It's very important, and we are influenced by what what they are listening from television, from radio, and so I think uh, now now they, they are attracted to to the top music more than they were at seven or eight years ago. So naturally they they come less to to the classical music and the traditional music. And they are trying to to find a easy way to to show up they they buy the this small and the cheap synthesizer they call it import the, the very basic and cheap uh, synthesizer that you have everything you have with them. So this is the instrument and after the, the singer and the so I think it, it, uh, it's good that uh, this pop music is coming. No, I think it's very bad. It would be better if they would forbid it. I am not for the forbidding and something. I think. Uh, I think if if uh, the people have the opportunity to to work pop music and mm. live music, it's okay. But uh, when you forbid something and after you allow just some kind of that thing in a With a uh, political and commercial, political and commercial idea, it's not good. And uh, this kind of music, uh, this kind of classical music, all over the world, it's like that. Need to be protected to to be held uh, even in Europe uh, for the classical music. We have a lot of uh, foundation and uh, the help the Forget the sponsoring from from government from all all the sources to because you mean that you should need that here too? Yes, of course. The government should sponsor the traditional music. It's natural because don't they do that? The the commercial art can uh, live. But now, since it's a lift, only a little of this pop music that is legal. It's legal. Yeah. You think it would be good if they legalize all music? Or what is it? It's very complicated. Yeah. Because already the the women cannot sing, so you have to eliminate everything that is related to the.
the voice of feminine voice. Is there any reason for that? Yes. Uh, why women are saying? I don't know exactly the you have to ask from from a character what's the exactly the the rule the Islam rule uh forbid that but I think uh, I think it's not a lot to to hear the screaming of the, the voice of the woman as you are not allowed to, to see the hair. It's not something public. So, I don't know exactly the the decrease was the You think it will change someday? I'm not a predictor, but uh, everything's fine. For you, and for your uh, music, for your music and that, how has it changed this, let's say, two, two last years? You know, I I cannot realize really, but because I am not in the heart of commercial activity and in the mass media, I'm not working in Iranian TV or radio. I'm not making. No, but I mean, what can you? What, I, I what can you do today and with your music that you couldn't do for two years? Ago? Nothing. Nothing is different. I. I was teaching music in a very uh, few people, very selected people, and I continue. My, my work is something very specific and very uh, particular, and I, I decide to, to do it in my head. Even the place that I this place that I'm teaching in that place is a place that uh, is uh, my place of teaching. I'm not going to. There are a lot of. How do you call How do you call it? I don't know. The private school of music. You prefer to do it your way. Uh, continue that uh, answer. Well, it's just a new thing, it's a special one. No, it's a special one. Thank you. Yeah, I have a little bit of that. Yes, uh, you have one question? Yes, 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 yes. You, uh, you will just can uh, be here until two. I, I have the possible to reply. Yes, well, this is finished very soon. Uh, okay, then, yes, are you uh, now optimistic for, for the future? Yes, of course. And for your students? Of course, yes. Do you think they will uh, could get work and could get money from the money? Money from the uh, From the music. That I could work with it. I'm not thinking of getting, uh, earning money from that. Because even have to live. Because uh, there, there are a way, a more intelligent way to, to earn money in Europe. That's the, the worst thing to do to, for earning money. Teaching music in this way that uh, <laughs> so uh, no I'm optimistic to to have some good students. Uh, you know the the real art 
standard, a real traditional art, you cannot diffuse it in a very mass publication and to, uh, to make a very large quantity of artists and persons. Even I, I remember in my generation, there was a kind of renaissance in music by our teacher and by that center of the nation to you. And finally, when you look at that period of time, you see the person who made this music to renew and to, to make it a living birth were not even more than the, the finger of one hand. You know, finally, you see that uh, if you can have a few good, good, good student, you, you can be happy and optimistic to, to continue to make this art uh, living and continue. Because I'm not thinking of Persian music just as a, an art as you think about it in Western culture. It's not only an individual work. I think it's a knowledge that comes from, from our uh, ancestor, from our the person who, who were before us, and they they give from their themselves and they work it, and it became a, a knowledge. And I I think this knowledge is very valuable, valuable in, in, the, in the sources of human uh, knowledge. I believe in that. We call that Persian music, but I believe that there is a concentration of human knowledge in this music. And I, I will be happy to, to make it living and to transfer it and to, to make it knowing and to preserve it. That's, that's the, what I'm working for. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. It would be, yes. Yeah. Do you think that you could play just one minute? I have not a question. This is here.
What were you playing? Esfahan. Esfahan. Thank you very much.